Good morning, and once again, welcome to worship at Crescent Hill Baptist Church. We are so glad that you have joined us. I pray that the peace of Christ is with you this Sunday. I'm very much looking forward to what will follow. We have a unique and special worship service in store for you today. A worship service where we're going to emphasize some of the ways in which we are partnering with ministry entities, local entities, entities operating across the state of Kentucky, as well as entities that are at work across the country. All of these mission partners are Cooperative Baptist Field Personnel, or missionaries. You all know one group that we will focus on well, the husband and wife duo that is Steve Clark and Annette Eller. They are Crescent Hill Baptist Church members, in addition, again, to being CBF field personnel. And we'll hear about their work in recent days here in Louisville with refugees, principally Korean refugees who have come from Burma to the United States. We'll also be introduced or reintroduced to Scarlett Jasper, who ministers with those in poverty principally in eastern Kentucky and southern Kentucky and northeastern Tennessee. Again, she is a Cooperative Baptist Field personnel individual as well. And finally, you'll hear some about Rick and Ellen Burnett, who minister in southern Florida with migrant workers there who are often taken advantage of. All three of these ministries, all five individuals involved, Steve and Annette, Scarlett, Rick and Ellen, have a special relationship with our church. We have decided within the course of the past year to be a church that offers encouragement and support to these three Cooperative Baptist Fellowship ministries. Also, I want to offer a word of thanks to our mission response team. That's a group here at our church that helps us provide the kindness and compassion in tangible ways to people in need locally across our state and across the country. In recent weeks, our mission response team collected donations for these three ministries that have been sent on to them. In September and October, the mission's response team will continue to encourage us to put the love of Christ in action by continuing to collect donations for groups such as these that we're highlighting today, as well as other local entities. Indeed, what it means to follow, be a follower of Christ is not just to have our hearts and put our faith in the right place. It also means that we must be the hands and feet of Christ to bring forth kindness and compassion into the world so that the reign of Christ as it exists in heaven will be made more known and manifest here on earth. Please pray with me. Good and gracious God, we pray as we begin worship most Sundays that the Spirit of the living God will descend upon us to bring us peace and comfort, but also to challenge us, transform us, and motivate us to turn our attention to the least of these, to those among us who are struggling. And Lord, I certainly pray that this day we will hear the challenge and we will arise and meet that call so that at the conclusion of our time together in worship and our time spent reflecting upon who you are, how you're moving through this world, how you're changing this world, that we will recommit to joining your godly, divinely inspired work. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Other gospel is there none than the one Christ gave us. Love it is and love alone has the power to save us. 
Love is everywhere the same. Sacrifices suffers. Love it is that bears our shame. Love is what God offers. Love is anxious to atone, seeks for just decisions. Love it is and love alone heals our deep divisions. In God's kingdom all are one. When in love we share it, what advances have been won through the Holy Spirit? In this spirit we must strive for the world's salvation offering all we have to give without reservation. Other gospel is there none than the one Christ gave us. Love it is and love the power to save us. The scripture reading today is from Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is now time for the children's moment. How many times a day do you hear or say the word love? Have you ever said, I love that song? or I love ice cream, or I love this shirt, it's my favorite. We use the word love when we really like something, but I'm not sure that this is the best way to use the word love. I wonder how many times today you have said, I love you, mom, or I love you, dad, or I love you, grandma and grandpa. I like this use of love better when we share how we feel about people close in our lives. We use the word love a lot. Love expresses a feeling we have towards people like our family and our friends, but love is also an action. I wonder how we show love through our actions. When we do something kind for someone, when we show someone we care by being interested in their lives, we are showing love through actions. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Romans chapter 12 and it gives us many ways to share love with others. If I were to retell this passage in my own words, I would say it like this. Love must be real. 
Love each other like they are your close family. Give more love to others than you want for yourselves. Work hard. Serve God. Be joyful because you have hope. When hard times come, be patient. Pray about all things. Share what you have with others. When others do bad things to you, wish them well, not bad. Be happy with those who are happy. And when others are crying, cry with them. Live together in peace. Be friends with those who seem unimportant and do not think you know more or know better than others. If someone does wrong, do not do wrong back to them. Do what is right. Do not seek revenge. God is in control. Show love in this way. Feed the hungry and give water to the thirsty. You cannot fix wrong by doing more wrong, but you can fix wrong by doing what is good and what is right. I think this scripture gives us good ways to show our love to others. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you show us how to love others. This week, help us to see ways in which we can show your love to those around us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what can you do? Your sister is crying, what can you do? You don't know what to say. You take your sister in your arms and you hug her. You take your sister in your arms and you love her. And what can you do when your brother is crying? You don't know what to say. You take your brother in your arms and you hug him. You take your brother in your arms and you love him. And what can you do when the children are crying? What can you do? You don't know what to say. You take the children in your arms and you hug us. You take the children in your arms and you love us. And what can you do when the whole world is crying? What can you do? You don't know what to say. You take the whole world in your arms and you hug us. You take the whole world in your arms and you love us. And what can you do when you are crying? What can you do? You don't know what to say. You look deep into your heart. Love will find you. You look deep into your heart, love will find you. And what can I do when I am crying? What can I do? I don't know what to say. Can I climb into your arms? Will you hold me? Can I climb into your arms? Will you hug me? Can I climb into your arms because you love me? Join us now as we hear from Bob Fox, who is the coordinator of CBF Kentucky. Then we will hear from CBF field personnel, Scarlett Jasper, Rick and Ellen Burnett, 
and Steve Clark and Annette Ellard, who work closely with us here at Crescent Hill Baptist Church. Good morning, Crescent Hill Baptist Church. I'm Bob Fox. I'm the coordinator of the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship of Kentucky. We are a fellowship of churches across the state of Kentucky, from the hills and hollers of eastern Kentucky all the way to the flatlands of western Kentucky. We have numerous ministries that we participate in, both in our commonwealth and around the world. We're excited that you have chosen to follow Christ together with us and are partners with us in the many projects that we do do. I want to spend some time telling you about what we do today. Like, for example, I'm sitting at a construction site. I'm at Extreme Build. This is our 15th house that we have built for a needy family in McCreary County, Kentucky. We provide labor and funds to help people who could not otherwise afford to be in a home to be in a home. Yesterday, I was working at West End Baptist Church in Louisville in the basement where they provide hot breakfast to indigent folks in the area. We are expanding and helping them expand using our resources and our workers to make sure that they have the space to feed all the people that they can and help them expand their ministry. We also are at work in Morocco and other places around the world. In Morocco particularly, we work with young Christians who come from Sub-Saharan Africa to Morocco. They come for a variety of reasons. Some come to study because of a scholarship program that's been established there. They come from their Sub-Saharan countries to come and be students. Others come as refugees seeking to cross the Sahara Desert, hoping to get on a boat to Europe. Unfortunately, their dreams are often stymied. They are caught at the border and they don't have anywhere to turn for help. The students in Morocco care enough about that situation that they've enabled us to be participants in a project to help with the refugees there. We do Christ's work wherever Christ's work is, and we are thankful that you have chosen to follow Christ with us together. Hello, I'm Scarlett Jasper, CBF Field Personnel or Missionary with the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. I serve in South Central and Southeastern Kentucky, as well as East Tennessee. I was commissioned in 2014. My work is part of Together for Hope, CBF's Rural Poverty Initiative in the persistent poverty areas of the United States. It is a pleasure to be here with you. As a missionary partner and ministry partner and supporter of CBF's Offering for Global Missions, I appreciate the opportunity to share with you about the ministry work that your partnership supports. We have just completed one of the larger projects that I'm involved in, CBF Kentucky's Extreme Build. This project is usually completed in 10 days in June, but with COVID-19, this year we had to adjust our schedule. This project is where we build a house for a family in McCreary County. Without the extra funds and construction assistance, this family would not be able to own their own home. This year, our family was Chester and Emma Hicks and their two children. Some of the immediate needs that you have been supporting is the purchase of emergency food, hygiene, and sanitizing supplies. Due to the pandemic, many of my areas were unable to access basic cleaning supplies, hand sanitizer, food staples, and bathroom tissue. The collection of these items, as well as financial support from ministry partners, allowed me to deliver donations and purchase needed items. These donations were distributed mainly through my school partners in the areas with the most need. We are currently still collecting these items, as well as face masks for the children who are scheduled to be going back to school in the near future. Fall and winter is a very busy time for our ministry. We're already beginning work on our Christmas boxes for Appalachia Project. Last year, we collected and distributed over 2,000 Christmas boxes to children and families in need. Many of these boxes will go to McCreary County, Kentucky, and Scott County, Tennessee, the poorest counties in these states. The Christmas boxes are distributed through the school's family resource centers to ensure that the children receive them. The principal of Pine Knot Elementary School in Kentucky shared with me that these boxes would be the only gift that some of her students receive. Our goal with our boxes is to provide quality and not quantity. Our focus is not to increase the number of boxes this year, but to ensure that each child receives a box that helps them experience the love and joy of Christ at Christmas. 
fall and winter are also busy with preparing for and assisting with the winter relief ministry in partnership with First Baptist Corbin. First Baptist Corbin is located in a tri-county area of persistent poverty counties. This ministry provides for shelter on the coldest nights as well as a hot meal each night throughout the week, mid-November to mid-March. My role is to work with those experiencing homelessness and housing insecurity. I assist them with locating housing, applying for eligible benefits, and looking for employment. As a Baptist Seminary of Kentucky graduate with a concentration in pastoral care and counseling, I'm also available to minister with participants who may need someone to talk to. I minister in case management and pastoral care and counseling from First Baptist Corbin on a weekly basis. I build relationships with the Winter Relief Ministry participants and I continue working with them year round. Another large part of our ministry work together is financial literacy. I'm involved in advocacy to help those who have been caught up in a payday lending trap. I advocate for an interest rate cap and educational programs to help those who need to utilize these services. These loans target those that can least afford a 400% or higher interest rate. When you're targeting the elderly, disabled, and working poor with these types of programs, that is usury. We need to continue to advocate for those who do not have a voice or whose voice is being stifled. Thanks to a grant from CBF Kentucky, I can offer micro loans that include a financial literacy component to those who have been caught in one of these vicious lending cycles. I have also partnered with Highlands Housing, a nonprofit on a financial literacy grant to educate and train communities on financial literacy topics. This work is ongoing year round. With the pandemic, my ministry has had to evolve and change. I'm not able to do monthly groups in person with my senior citizens, the support groups that I facilitate with survivors of domestic abuse, financial literacy workshops, or the nutrition education programs, but I stay in touch as much as possible and facilitate programs through social media, Facebook Messenger, and Zoom, as well as phone calls and texts. I want to thank you for your support. Without ministry partners like you, none of this work is possible. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your worship today. Good morning, Crescent Hill Baptist Church. The lectionary passage for today seems very appropriate for these times. There seems to us to be so much rampant evil taking its toll, especially among the marginalized, which includes the farm worker community of Immokalee, Florida, where we serve in partnership with you. We constantly encounter the effects of xenophobic evil that perpetrates a migrant underclass in our country. We see firsthand the evil of local slumlords who charge extortionary rents for farm workers to stay in overcrowded and dilapidated mobile homes. We observe how farm workers are underpaid for their essential efforts and how they're packed into buses and vans to be taken to the fields, further exposing them to the COVID-19 virus. But each day, we should remember verse 21 of this passage that states, Do not let evil overcome you. Overcome evil by doing good. And in partnership with you, we are trying to overcome the ironic evil of food insecurity in a farm town, even despite the complications that the COVID-19 pandemic is bringing to us. For you to have a better sense of these recent efforts, we prepared this brief video presentation.
We hope you notice the dish pans that your congregation donated to enable Cultivate Abundance to prepare container gardens and distribute these to over 30 local households. We hope you notice the face masks that your congregation made. These have been distributed to the clientele of Mission Peniel, helping to fight the spread of COVID-19 in a community with a positivity rate of over 20%. And we're grateful for your ongoing prayers and encouragement. And we're particularly grateful for our Encourager Church relationship with Crescent Hill. We pray for you as well, as you strive to not let evil overcome, but as you overcome evil by all the good that you do in Louisville and beyond. Even though we are gathering virtually, it's wonderful to be with you all today. As Cooperative Baptist Fellowship Global Missions field personnel and as members of Crescent Hill Baptist Church. And we're extraordinarily grateful for this opportunity to share with you about your ministry with us among the Karen and other people from Burma. Before the pandemic, we had expanded the scope of our ministry through our Hope Rising Ministry Center by focusing on those on the margins and offering a place for inclusion. Crescent Hill's ongoing support through prayers, volunteers, and finances have been crucial in the center's growth. By the end of 2019, we were seeing between 10 and 20 people in the center each day. Whether they were seeking help with a problem, offering interpretation, needing some place to be, sharing vegetables from their garden, or bringing a prepared meal to share just because, as one friend told us, I know a lot of people usually come on Fridays. Through the grace of God, those seeking help were becoming helpers, and those who felt lost were finding beloved community at Hope Rising. At the beginning of this year, we were making plans to launch a support group for young mothers and a farmer's market for folks to sell and trade extra produce from their gardens. Then the pandemic struck and we had to close the center and our in-person ministry came to a halt. Our model of ministry has always been one of availability and accompaniment. Walking alongside folks, especially in the hard times and in the hard places, we're still available to share God's love with families and individuals in most of the situations we were addressing before the pandemic, but it's oftentimes extremely challenging. Nearly everything we've done over the past six months has been by phone, text, email, Zoom, FaceTime, and Messenger. Still in these extraordinary times, we found new ways to walk alongside. Like helping sick folks evaluate their symptoms with the CDC self-checker, arranging for COVID-19 testing, and coordinating emergency medical response and like assisting communications between employees, employers, and medical providers to facilitate short-term disability insurance and a return to work after quarantine and isolation. And when I came across a couple of N95 masks in my toolbox, God made a way for us to go visit a critically ill friend in his home and share worship and communion with him and his family. And a few weeks later, those masks allowed me to be with another dear friend in the hospital as she lived her last few hours on this earth, surrounded by her family and friends who loved her. And it made it safer to participate in worship during the week-long wake in the family's home. The lectionary passage from Romans 12 provides a perfect theme for our missions month at Crescent Hill and for our worship. It shows us what love in action should look like. We are to do our part and God will do God's part. No matter what's happening in the world around us, even in a pandemic, we are to be about overcoming evil by doing good. We've been reimagining how to walk alongside folks in these extraordinary times and God has continued to make a way Crescent Hill Baptist Church has continued to come alongside us. When we found that folks 
sick and quarantined couldn't get to the store for food and other essential supplies, many of you volunteered to help provide pickup and delivery service. You provided snacks and sanitizer and masks to distribute during the wake for a Karen mother who died, and more masks for nearly every person we've transported to essential and emergency care this summer. And by the way, the ones with the red chili peppers were very popular. <laughs> And the Love in Action donation drive has stocked us with enough office and hospitality supplies to keep our home office running indefinitely and ready us for the day we can safely reopen Hope Rising Ministry Center. And now that we've revisioned the Hope Rising Mommies Group and are planning to launch online, we hope some of you will step forward as volunteers to provide webinars and mentorship for young mothers further isolated by the pandemic. We don't know what else the future holds, but we know that Crescent Hill Baptist Church will continue to be a partner in our ministry, just as you have been from the very beginning, from the beginning before the beginning, when you sent us with teams from Crescent Hill to work with the Corinne and then the Burnettes in Thailand. You're more than partners, more than our Encourager Church. You're our church family for 30 years. And although we're not able to be together in the ways we have always been, we continue to give thanks to God at every remembrance of you because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And we are confident that God will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God's ultimate love in action for the world. When I was a child, I learned the finger play. Here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the doors. Here is all the people. But if you look around the sanctuary today, there are very few, if any, people. That's only if we see the church as a building with physical walls and maybe a steeple. During the pandemic, perhaps we have come to realize in a way that might not have been imagined before, that the church is truly the universal Christ whose spirit moves among humanity and has not nor ever will be contained in a building. Our world today is literally hurting with millions of people who are sick, who are unemployed, who are suffering from systemic racism. In our generation, there is no greater time to pause and consider how we respond when we are distanced from each other socially. Father Richard Rohr, the Franciscan priest and author in his recent weekly blog, describes growth as a constant shift from order to disorder, then eventually reorder. Something new is being created from chaos. There is no doubt that all of humanity is in a period of disorder and our established norms have been completely disrupted. What will we ultimately recognize as a new reorder? And how do we get there eventually after the COVID crisis? Father Rohr states that love is the physical heart of the universe, the attraction of all things toward all things. We could say that love is the universal ordering principle. Love in action, our theme today, brings order from chaos and a purpose to life during and after disorder. So where do we start to put love in action? Throughout scripture, there are consistent themes that God uses whatever we have to share his love. A kind word, a gift, an encouraging text, an email, letter, empathy, forgiveness, activism to change injustice, a meal, sharing any and everything with generosity. Recently, I watched a movie called Resistance, the true story of a group of French Jews who smuggled literally thousands of orphan children across enemy lines to freedom during World War II. The hero was Marcel Marceau, later a famous French mime, whose primary talent was to make kids laugh and trust him to take them to safety. He had very few resources, but instead used his abilities to show love in action. The late civil rights giant John Lewis describes this love, his faith, as a pilot light, sharing God's love to even those who hurt you. 
What can we then share in times of turmoil to be that pilot light in the darkness? Let's change the finger play for our times. Here is the church, here's the steeple, open the doors, and here are all the people who will share God's love outside our church walls. The videos you have seen are demonstrations of ways that various ministry partners are doing just that, putting love into action. As a church, expressing its love in action, let us pray. Lord, you are our light and our salvation. Who then shall we fear? You are the stronghold of our lives. Of whom shall we be afraid? For you are good and faithful, slow to anger and full of loving kindness. God, as we are committed to you and your ways, let us be a people unshaken in our firm resolve to love. We confess, O oh God, that in our humanness, we fall short. We make mistakes. We miss the mark. Loving God, examine our hearts, examine our lives, examine our motives. Bring clearly into focus, Lord, anything, God, that is in us that is not of you. Prune away anything that would keep us from being obedient to you. Help us to never lose sight of your love. Keep us in step with you. God, you have called us to love from the very center of who we are and to love with our whole selves. We live in disruptive times, the wind and the waves battering against us. But in the midst, O oh God, may we hear your voice and be even more greatly determined. God, may we not grow weary in loving. Holy Spirit, keep us fueled and aflame. God, we pray for an end to this pandemic, Lord. We know that there is not anyone living right now, God, who has not been affected. Bring your healing, God. May we, as Christians, do our part as we navigate this place that we find ourselves in together. May we proceed with love and with courage in our daily lives. Courage, God to love and to lead as you bring healing to the earth. Lord, we pray for all those who have been in the path of storms that have traversed our landscape in recent days. God, we pray your healing for our state, for the pandemic has added to the burden of many. God, we pray for leaders on the ground who reflect your love daily to people in the communities throughout the state who are in distress. God, bring your healing to this community as we seek a way forward to right the wrongs of racial, racial justice and inequity. God, bring your healing and your peace to our school system as we navigate new territory and find ourselves in this season, God, navigating as parents students, teachers, administrators. Bring your healing, God, to the people of this community of faith. Lord, today we pray for Jack, for Woody, for Janet, for Timothy, for Lee, for Enethal. Bring your healing, O oh God, to each of our hearts. May we exchange our burden for your freedom our sorrow for your joy. Help us to love well, keep us near to you. Bind us to your heart, O oh Lord, and send us forth in your service. Amen. Will you come? 
come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit that what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Lord, your summons echoes true in you, but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Thank you for joining us this morning for this special Mission Sunday service. We would like you to remember that our meal pickup day has changed to Tuesdays from now on. If you would like to sign up for a meal this week, please contact the church office by noon tomorrow. The Henson class continues as well on Thursdays. If you would like to participate, you could contact the church office for more information about how to do that. We also wanna highlight the need for financial contributions to the CBF Disaster Response Fund You'll find more information about that on the church website and the church Facebook page. Please consider responding with love and money to the needs that are presenting themselves with the hurricanes that have come our way this week. Hear now these words of blessing and benediction. As you go, remember, this is not the end, but only the beginning. This is not goodbye, just a temporary separation. For in God, we are all one people, one family, bound together by the unconditional love of God forever. And in spite of any evidence to the contrary, good is stronger than evil, love is stronger than death, and Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen and amen. <laughs>